Admiral's log. The tides of fate have once again cast us into the cauldron of conflict. It is with a sense of duty and solemn resolve that I find myself recording this log amidst the turmoil of war. The year is 1939, and the United States Navy sails far from our shores, venturing into the distant waters of the Baltic Sea. In these foreign lands, we are tasked with putting pressure on the Soviet Union through a series of daring naval landings. The weight of responsibility is immense, and the lives of our brave sailors and marines rest in the balance as we navigate these tumultuous waters. The brief respite of peace was but a fleeting moment, and now, once more, the seas are churned by the storm of war. As I stand on the deck of my flagship, my gaze is drawn to the horizon, where the fires of battle flicker like distant stars. The Sentinel-class battlecruisers, our proud vanguards, lead the charge. Their impressive performance a testament to the dedication of our nation's shipbuilding and sailors. But the challenges ahead are manifold, and we must remain vigilant in the face of adversity. Our actions here may shape the course of events far beyond these foreign shores, impacting the future of nations and the course of history. Hey guys, still here, and welcome to episode 5. This is the US war against Russia. It's October 1939, and the Russians, well, they're speed building a fleet. And we seem to have caught at least one of their battlecruisers, the Tolyati. It's another Astrakhan-class battlecruiser that we've already seen before, packing 11-inch guns, 11.6s. Last time around, when I came up against one of these, it uh, gave me quite a kicking on one of my battlecruisers. This time around, the battlecruisers are not alone. So the Battlecruiser America, the Battlecruiser Philippines, and the Battlecruiser Sentinel, which is the original name of the ship class. Um, this time backed up by North Carolina class Idaho, as well as the flagship of the fleet. The Enterprise is here with her six 16-inch guns. Now, she is, up until the point where she's relieved by Sovereign, which is currently getting built, the flagship of the fleet. If the Enterprise, for some reason, dies, the campaign ends immediately. Because, as it is my character, the Admiral is killed. So, we're going to have to fight this guy. Um, I suspect that my 16s will be able to keep this guy very much at range. The rest of the fleet might be an interesting um, challenge to manage. And hopefully the rest of the battlecruisers and battleship can actually clean up before we even get to shoot this guy. The target's been acquired. At about 40 kilometer range, the Enterprise opens fire. Her long-range 16-inch guns might not reload very quickly. But by God, these things have a range. This thing can send those 16-inch shells across a vast distance. 39.8 kilometers. Can she actually hit something at that range? I'd rather doubt it, because we're getting about a percent chance to hit. Now, interestingly, the enemy battlecruiser has taken substantial damage, but not from me. This thing has already seen, apparently, combat, potentially mines. I'm not sure what did this, uh, but um, I'm suspecting it might have been shells, because I don't think a mine can strike horizontally like that. Now, I have to ask my battlecruisers to go out and chase the enemy, because these guys are the fastest of the fleet. Uh, yes, they are faster than my destroyers, which is a little curious. Now, considering that I have an overwhelming amount of firepower, um, and most likely range, I don't really have to get very close. Ideally, really, I would stay out of range. Because I have the Idaho here as well. She's not quite in range yet. She can fire to 24, but she's almost there. The battlecruisers with their 12s, and these are long-barreled 12s if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, but not by that much, really. Oh, it's a Mark IV. That's the issue. Uh, these Mark IVs are capable of hitting up to 29 km range with AG. And I suspect Idaho, with her Mark III, she's just slightly older. But otherwise, very capable. 0.4% chance, though. It's the accuracy that's going to kill us here. Well, <clears throat> it's going to kill them eventually. It's going to take me a lot of supplies before we get to that. Thing is. With a 16-inch shell, you're gonna get lucky once. 
Enterprise. 15% chance already. That's at 20 kilometer range. It's basically half her range now. And there's the first massive impact. 1,258 from a 16 inch shot. So that was the Enterprise. This ship... Um, it, how should I put this? It kind of got activated, if you will. It already had a lot of hit points lost. But by hitting it... The, I think, damage and stability got activated. So now she has 40% damage and stability. She has taken flooding from that impact. And that adds another 15% damage and stability. And her lifespan is just going to be measured in minutes at this point. Because the amount of damage that this ship will take... And the amount of shells that this ship is about to receive... Is going to be fairly unhealthy. They did... To their credit, managed to hit a destroyer. And I'm honestly not really sure how the destroyer shrugged off an 11 inch shell. Oh, it was an overpen. Yes, that makes sense. There's another bit. Hold on, are these things not very waterproof? Because I don't believe I hit them again. No, it was, yeah, there was the 1258 and then 71. I think she's still flooding from that initial hit. 7.5% chance to hit on the BCs. 14% chance on the Idaho. And 16% still on the Enterprise. Now, her escort... <clears throat> I haven't really talked about this thing at all. Um, it's a heavy cruiser. It's packing 12 sevenths. And it's kind of acting like a submarine. This thing is not necessarily harmless. Especially to my destroyers. I'm going to try and keep the uh, heavy cruisers engaging this guy. don't really feel like I need to throw out torpedoes. Although, well, I have them. I might as well. 12-7. Uh, oh, yeah, never mind. That puts you into torpedo range. Okay, if you have a good solution, by all means, fire. Uh, where are the BCs at? They're still engaging the battle cruiser at 19 km range. There's another damage to the main tower. Very good. Idaho going broadside, but not very accurate. Another 12-inch hits. 6-inch are hitting. Ooh, the Enterprise just took a big hit. Now, I know I could have played this perfectly, if you will. Taking no damage and just letting the Enterprise hammer this thing at massive range. The thing is, that would probably be fairly boring. It would just not really be that interesting to watch. So I don't mind if the capital ships that I have take a hit every now and then. Because it seems that the Russians are already pissing off, well, the majority of the world. So I'm not really too concerned about my odds of winning this fight. Uh, let's go for this target instead. That's the thundering of the Enterprise. And that hits the Enterprise again. Identification is proceeding nicely. 76%. 68 on the heavy cruiser. Helena has taken a scrap of damage. Idaho fires a full blast of HE. Her HE is not that deadly. But considering that this ship has taken a massive amount of damage, HE could very well pen their armor. And could cause a lot of issues. Nope, everything ricocheted. Oh, then it wasn't HE. It is. Hold on, that's curious. Damage to main gun. She's still ricocheting a lot, to her credit. Torpedoes away from the heavy cruiser Helena. I wonder what the other heavy cruiser is going to be doing, because she is packing torpedoes. And that is a concern. Um, torpedo range... Not that far, apparently. Here, 9-5. <clears throat> okay, we're not going to get closer to that thing than 9-5. Destroy the main gun. Now, I have seen comments in the previous video saying, hey, we got way too much information as players. You know so much about the enemy ship, down to the amount of guns that they have, down to the amount of shells that they have, uh, which sailor has a toothache, basically. You just know everything. You got perfect information. And I completely agree. It makes the game too easy. It makes the game predictable. 
And um, I'm not necessarily arguing the fact that we should have none of the information, but maybe a bit less. Like all of this stuff over here, I know exactly what this ship is suffering from. And for example, damage and stability, I know that if I hit a couple of ship, well, if I hit a ship, yeah. I know that if I hit a ship a couple of times, it's going to take damage and stability. Whether it has taken said damage and stability is something I do not know. So, while I would very much appreciate this window for my own ships, I want to see what sort of stats they have. I shouldn't really be seeing it for the enemy. And you could argue, yeah, well, just hide that. Um, sure, that would kind of fix the issue, but I can still see it here. The rain circles. Um, I already have too much information as is. So that is something that I still think would be... Um, oof. Would be very nice if we could... And this is weird. If we could get less information. If we could actually have... As a player, a worse position. Less information about your enemies makes potentially for a better game. Why is the Enterprise switching her fire? Uh-oh. I'm going to turn this ship around because these DDs are getting trigger happy. Gentlemen, you're not in the front line. So please don't act as you are. Because you might actually end up torpedoing Saratoga at this rate. Saratoga, who is by all accounts healthy. And I, for one, would very much like to keep it that way. The Toliati, down to 11% structural integrity. He's taken 5k damage, but of course that's not telling the whole story, as most of the ship was already gone by the time that she got here. They do have a lot of armor on this thing. 12 and a half inch armor belt. She's pretty well armored all around, and especially the superstructure. 6.2 inches on the superstructure should make this thing fairly top heavy. The amount of armor that you put on, well, the whole top of the ship, I guess it's balanced by the main belt to some extent. It feels like a lot of armor. And to her credit, she's still fighting. Time to finish this party. We're going to fire HE salvos at them. Why HE? Because I want to put them on fire. And they uh, do have spacious quarters. But they've already lost a portion of their crew. Their secondary guns and torpedoes have already taken a beating. And I think we should be able to fairly swiftly overwhelm the amount of fires that they can adequately manage. So I'm not too concerned about whether or not we're going to be burning off a lot of crew. I think that's going to happen anyway. And cruiser is next. Heavy cruiser Pallada. Uh, we have an outbound torpedo from the Pallada. Which should stop here, but they generally don't. So let's have Idaho and Enterprise do a preemptive turn. Because I'm not eager to lose these ships, either of them. Chance to pen. 35%. What's your armor like? 10 inch on the main belt. Plus 150%. Yeah. I don't think my BCs are going to be able to pen that very adequately. She's angled as well. 12 kilometers out. 22 inches of armor pen. Because they got semi armor piercing shells. Oh, sorry. No, they got capitalistic too. These things aren't supposed to be cruiser hunters. Let's see if they can actually inflict some damage here. Where are those torps at? Here. Okay. Detach. Enterprise turns that way, Idaho turns the other. No, actually, Idaho turns this way as well. It's getting a little too dangerous here. Okay, I would like my battle cruisers to actually hit the target so I can see what they do. Shells going all over the place, especially as the Pallada keeps dancing around. The Pallada... Still has a bunch of torpedo tubes that she has not used. That is a case for firing more high explosive at her. <clears throat> uh, with the big E, I don't have to. Idaho, yeah, it's fine. 
My whole heavy cruiser group is now trying to... It's not actually trying to do anything. I thought it was trying to screen, really. It's not. Atlanta. This way. Oh, probably because I split up the Enterprise Idaho div. That is probably why these guys have suddenly decided to do something different. What? Look at this. Look at this. It's like all these ships, these DDs, are targeting a dead ship. That's weird. That should not be... Yeah, now they're targeting the heavy cruiser, which is not quite within their range. But they should have switched automatically. Oh, good hit. Many good hits. Was that the heavy cruiser? No, yeah, that was the, the battle cruisers. The Philippines? I did that. 190. The Sentinel does need to get upgraded, by the way. Yeah, this is the point at which the 12 inchers start flying right through the cruiser. And she seems to be hurting. She's definitely not sinking yet. But the rate at which the ship is taking punishment probably won't take much longer. She is well protected, though. Spacious quarters, maximum bulkheads, lots of crew to keep the ship safe, lots of armor. Lots of bulkheads to subdivide the ship to ensure that not single hits are critical. The problem is, it's not single hits. In that the torpedoes are detonating aboard the Pallada. And her fate is sealed. Engine is out. Another torpedo launcher has been destroyed. Pallada has done 338 damage and has now taken 15, 16k, 17, 18, and she's gone. Now, the Russians did... Managed to do some damage against Helena. They did inflict a hit on the Enterprise. So by no means have we escaped without harm. But we did take home about... About a hundred times as many victory points as the Russians did. What is this going to mean for the rest of the war? If the Russians want to sue for peace, I do not. I will not accept that. Or rather, I will recommend my government not accept that. And here's why. I'm planning three naval invasions. Yeah, it's potentially a bit ambitious. Um, the reason for it... Nope. Fight to the end. The reason for that... No, 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 thank you. Is that I want to do an invasion here in Latvia, which is uh, not exactly an independent country. I want to do an invasion over here in Lithuania. And I'm looking towards the far east. Moskolova! Is the port where we are currently, which is part of North Sakhalin. And that is where another task force sits. So, we're going to head towards the east first. For the simple reason that if I control these two areas, I'll be able to reroute the fleet from here to another location. Furthering my odds of actually being able to invade another position. So, we're going to do a naval invasion against Russia in the area of North Sakhalin. Uh, whether I have enough, I don't know. That's something that's unfortunately only revealed in the next bit, the next turn. It's something I would like to see, because the game says, hey, you need 100,000 tons to start your invasion. Cool, I have way more than that. But generally, when you then actually launch the invasion, the game goes then, ah, yes, well, actually, uh, you have 100k plus, check. But you need a bunch more. You need lots more. You need, like, 250,000 tons, and then you go, ah, I might not have that. Um, as the invasions are being prepared, I'm going to do some ship designing, because currently, I have the fairly old Morris class from 1930. I did revise the Morris class in 1936, but these are 3,000 ton destroyers, and by now, I can build something far superior to that little destroyer. Uh, no, this is not what I have in mind. The Advanced Destroyer Large can go up to 4,500 tons, which, relative to the Morris, is 50% bigger. So this ship is going to be having a lot more firepower, um, ideally more range, and critically, more speed. Because that's something that the other ships just did not have, and still don't have. They're still pretty slow. I also have the Compact Advanced Destroyer. I have the Destroyer Leader. I think the destroyer leader is the type of hull form I'm using for the Morris. 
Um, the destroyer large has pretty decent hull form, pretty good sustained speed while turning, and uh, should also make for a pretty good surface, um, let's say recon unit, because it has a surface visibility of 4400. Oh, actually, no. Surface visibility. Is that like how I'm visible or how I'm able to spot? Yeah. It's the spotting range. The tower becomes destroyed. Enemy ships can only be spotted according to their base surface visibility. So, yeah. Um, having a higher visibility actually does help. My spotting range has just increased to 10k. I am going to buff that some more. I'm going to give this guy a very advanced radar. And suddenly I'm going to see out to 24 kilometers. If I add radio direction finding, that doesn't do anything, but it does improve my ASW rating, so I can kill submarines a little easier. Now, I'm still hoping to eventually run this mod with uh, Admiral Snackbar's mod, which is called the Balance mod, but when I installed it recently, and recently is uh, 24th of July, the game just wouldn't launch. So I decided to go back to the vanilla version and unfortunately, um, <clears throat> we're still using this standard situation, the standard uh, version of the game. All right, let's set up a secondary tower. I'm not going to go for any particular, I'll say, destroyer design. Um, because I always end up on, let's say, the losing part. If I build a ship that is not exactly according to historical standards, Somebody's going to go, oh no, that's not historical. If I uh, do build it historically, it's generally not going to do that well for gameplay purposes. So, one way or another, uh, I'm always going to end up getting shafted. Alright, let's get some barbette armor on here. I also still need to fix a torpedo launcher. Uh, where am I going to put that? Before weight offset is pretty high. Is it going to work if I put the launcher there? No, not really. Pitch is 53%. Yikes. That's going to be awful for her stability. Hold on. What? That's a neat trick. Huh. Wait, it's not even this one? What's causing the pitch of this ship to be this this bad? I, I can increase the beam. I can increase the draft, but increasing the draft makes it worse. Now, lowering the draft kind of makes it better, but you're sacrificing a ton of range. Um. Hmm. If I take this off... 53.9? What's that going to do effectively for my ship? Minus 13% base accuracy. 38% accuracy penalty for maneuvering. Whoa. That's not something I really want on this ship. If I can help it. <laughs> Generally, if you have too much pitch, you want to pull everything closer to the center of mass. The thing is, the ship is already kind of... <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> it's already pretty close to the center of mass. It, look, this thing says, Ah, I'm a funnel slot. Uh, that means I can fit onto funnel slots. So, <laughs> things can fit over there. Yeah, right. Um, If I put... Where's my engine room? Can I put this like amidships? I do need a secondary tower. Okay, fine. Here's your secondary tower. Go on. 55-2? 56-1? What's with these ships? Why are these boats so bad? 65? Am I missing something obvious? Or is this just a pretty awful hole? Because if it is the latter, then I'm probably not too well off picking this particular design. I can see you doing some pretty ludicrous things with this 
design. I mean, all this whole space does give you, like, a lot of options. Are they great options? Mm, maybe not. I mean... This is funny, <laughs> I think. Because you can fire at 15 torpedoes at the bow. Um, if you pack, like, 23-inch oxygens, that can reach 23 kilometers. Oh, sorry, 20, yeah, 23 eight. They'll never see you. They'll never even see you. Is it going to be actually hitting something? Uh, I don't think so. It's also not exactly what I need for this particular design. Now, I think the only real option that I have is to either ditch the heavy modern main tower and go for the enhanced modern tower. 18 base accuracy, 22 base accuracy. Pitch does not exactly improve. What is my visibility and range? I do want to have a look at those stats. 20,000 meters. And this... 57, 55, 53... Yeah. I do want this tower, because I want this thing to be able to spot something. Not just sit there and look pretty. Although, that's debatable. Um, if I give it... Like, another funnel... That should fix my maneuver or my uh, range issue. Tower spawning 1800, 1850, 1950. Yeah, it kind of just becomes progressively worse from there. 59 pitch. Okay, we're going to move this forward a bit. Put a torpedo launcher. Move. Um, <clears throat> over here. And if I want to buff all these things, is that going to help me? I think... I think these things are best used as fire spitters. So basically, firing as much incendiary as possible and hoping to put the enemy ship on fire. If you give them Capitalistic 2, they can still pack a fairly respectable punch. Whether that'll be enough to actually go through armor? Mm, meh. Not really. I do want to have these guys as pretty, pretty strong gunboats. So with this, I can get 8 forward firing 5 inchers on a destroyer. That's a substantial amount of firepower. I mean, with that, if you go bow in, you should be able to very quickly get rid of the enemy target, right? Just... <laughs> why not? Uh, why not? Well, there is a reason, actually, why you would not want to do this. And that is, the problem becomes um, you have just enough armor to start stopping shells. So, normally you might have an overpen, so a shell flies in one side, out the other. Um... <clears throat> If you don't have that, and the shell actually has enough to arm the fuse, well, that can make things less ideal. Hold on, my pitch is going down as I put things outward? Really? I don't believe it should happen that way. Maybe this hole is just a bit borked. Anyway, um, can I put some dual barrels? Yeah, I can. Why? Why not? It's an American boat. Oh, come on. You're telling me you have a spot there and then you block it? Why? See that searchlight? You cannot put a gun there. Um... Is this why? No. That's just weird. Okay, fine. Um, <clears throat> actually, I might give them 1.1s. Why not? It's funny. 1.1s are gonna fire every 3.6 seconds. They'll pen almost nothing. They'll fire very quickly. Um, especially HE won't pen anything, but that's fine. Oh, I do want depth charges, thank you very much. Oh. I'm a little over heavy. 
Let's see if we can push the turret slightly inward and shrink the citadel. Yeah, there we go. Slightly aft heavy, but I'm willing to accept that. That 2.3% is nothing compared to pitch and roll. So we should be fine. Uh, so this boat can do 38,000 kilometers at 35 knots. Well, I mean, her cruise speed's going to be a bit lower, but beyond that, she'll be fine. Triple hull bottom, as much protection as she can get. Capitalistic shells and incendiaries. Um, this should be triple base. And I might actually go for light shells. Here. Because they fire faster. They have slightly lower chance to, inc to set fires. Um, but I do like using light shells every now and then. Just to throw things off. So, there we are. This is the Coldwell class destroyer. Although, you know, inflationary, because I've kind of seen ships, um, I think of the light cruiser or even heavy cruiser persuasion, weighing just about as much as this. Uh, these things are... <sighs> Holy what? A normal destroyer cost me 33 million. This thing is going to cost me 148? Like, light cruisers are cheaper. He whole heavy cruisers are cheaper than this? What is making this thing so awfully expensive? This thing is costing me 5.9 million a month. This thing is costing me 8.5 million a month? Wow. I mean, I do in a couple. But that's really expensive for a DD. But again, it's, well, displacement wise, it's more akin to a light cruiser. So, next episode, we're going to see how goes the invasion. Or rather, invasions, because I'm going to be planning a lot more. So, be sure to join next time. Thank you guys for watching this one. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you soon for more.